Welcome to another Airbrush Asylum video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use two Airshot templates to create an artwork. The two templates that we're going to be using is a skull template and a texture template. Now the skull template, as you can see, is two pieces, so you get the negative and the positive, which is really handy. So starting off with the negative, I'm going to lay that down on my canvas. This is a pre-primed canvas, so I didn't do any prepping whatsoever, just painting straight onto it. And I'm just masking up the area around the template so that I can control my overspray. I want to uh, focus on just rendering the skull first, and then I'm going to do a bit of a background towards the end of this video. So be sure to check out the full tutorial. So starting off with a, a bony color, which I made up with a sand and a white. So sand is a color available from Trident Airbrush Paint. So if you, if you can't get sand, just get something very similar um, and just mix that up, even if you get like a flesh color and tweak that a little bit. Now I'm splattering with a dark sepia brown. This is sepia brown by Trident mixed with transparent base and some black. Now all the paints that I use in this video have been pre-thinned to my liking. I usually run at a 70-30% uh, ratio, meaning 70% uh, reducer, 30% paint. You can adjust this to your liking uh, and whatever suits you. When I'm running it that thin, I generally turn the air pressure down to about 18 to 20 PSI. So you'll notice there with the splattering, what I did was uh, I just got a little uh, pretty much like a paddle pops it was just a mixing stick and um, just angling the airbrush down onto that and I'm able to ricochet the paint off and hit the canvas and that's giving me this splattering effect you can also create this effect by uh, kinking the air hose if you like uh, probably not the best way to do it but uh, you can achieve it with uh, by doing that the other thing you can do is also turn the air pressure down which will in turn cause the airbrush to begin splattering. The reason I like using this method is because I can control the size of my splatters. The further back, meaning uh, the closer towards me with the airbrush, the larger the splatters and the further forward with the airbrush, so closest to the end of the splatter tool, the finer the uh, splatters will come out. So you notice I'm using my positive template now and all the templates are adhering temporarily to the canvas by using a spray adhesive. So what I'm doing with that spray adhesive, you can get some from the, any art supply shop, um, just spraying the back with a couple of light coats until it gets a bit of a tacky uh, feel to it and then uh, applying that onto my canvas and all that does is just holds it in place. I'm not trying to permanently bond it on there. And you also want to make sure you don't apply too much because you don't want to leave glue residue. So a couple of light mist coats should give you a nice tacky finish and allow that template to stick and not move around when you are painting. So starting with some of the darker values, I'm uh, working on the eye sockets here. I'm also lightly dusting in the teeth just so I can see where they're going to go. I'm not going as heavy. As I'm going to come in with a darker tone later on, you saw the colours that I'm going to be using for this particular tutorial at the start of this video, being the bone colour, so the sand and the white, the darker sepia, the transparent black, and then white for some highlights. So I'm now going to carefully remove the positive template, and you can see here I've got a basic outline of my skull. If you want, you can spray it a bit heavier so it's a bit easier to see. Uh, the spattering and the use of the texture template is just to create a bit of texture and underlying um, tones in the uh, skull before I start to render over the top of it. This is also why I like to add transparent base to a lot of my paint so that it doesn't opaque over everything that I've already done. And I'm just continuing with that uh, darker sepia and I'm just going to start to shape the skull. I've picked my light source, in this case it's going to be at the top left. And I'm just uh, shading accordingly. 
Now this is not meant to be a photorealistic skull, it's a stylized skull utilizing the template so I am trying my best to keep it as simple as possible so that you can all follow along with this. So you can go out, grab one of these templates for yourself and have a go. And feel free to also change the colors up a little, you don't have to do it in these tones, this is just what I've chosen. Um, you know, you don't have to do the spattering, you can follow it exactly or make up your own version. That's really the uh, beauty of freehand templates, it just allows you to get a quick sketch down uh, by utilizing the template and then you go ahead and freehand from there. The airbrush that I'm using at the moment is the uh, GSI Creos PS770. So this runs a 0.18mm needle nozzle setup. It also has the MAC valve. And the other brushes that I'm using in this video are the CMC Plus Micron, uh, which has a 0.23mm needle nozzle setup, and also the Awada CMSB Micron, which has the 0.18mm setup and is a side feed airbrush. So you'll see that a bit later on for the final detailing. If you are interested to check out any of the airbrushes that I am using, by all means feel free to check out the links in the description below. And if this is the first time to the channel, feel free to hit subscribe, tap on that bell icon and that will notify you every time I put out new content. And for everyone else that's been watching, welcome back. I hope you're enjoying this video so far. And if you are enjoying it and you feel that this could be helpful to someone else, by all means share it out and let's build this airbrushing community together. Okay, so now that I've got uh, pretty much everything shaped up with the sepia, that darker sepia, I'm switching to white. Again, tried an airbrush paint, and I've also reduced this to my liking. So I'm just going to go ahead and add some of these highlights in certain areas of the artwork, just to pick up the edge of the bone, and uh, further define those cracks. So I'm not going overboard with this colour, again less is more. And always stay away from the darker areas that you've completed when doing white so that you don't get that muddiness. And coming back in with my texture template, I am just uh, adding a bit more texture on top of what we've already done with that white. So it's just going to add another layer of depth. And up nice and close when you are rendering the teeth. You'll notice I'm not colouring the whole tooth, I'm just hitting certain hot spots. Some of those real white bright white highlights. Again keeping in mind my light source. Okay, so I'm pretty happy now with my highlights there. Now I'm going to further detail this skull using transparent black. So this is transparent base mixed with reducer and black added to that. You can add a couple of extra uh, strengths utilizing the transparent black if you're not confident with going with such a darker tone uh, after just using that sepia brown. 
and same thing with the sepia you could also um, instead of just going with the sepia brown which I've already darkened uh, you could use the regular sepia brown first do all your initial shaping and then darken that for a little bit more with a bit of black and then re-render so deepen your shadows and then get up to this step uh, using the transparent black so the more stages you put in uh, is probably uh, makes it a lot easier if you're just starting out with the airbrush if you've got more control then by all means you can follow the way I'm doing it and uh, have less tones that you're actually using So you can really notice now how the skull is starting to take shape. I'm getting those nice crisp edges. If you are struggling to get those sharp uh, edges, those really defined edges, then by all means go grab that positive template again. And you can use that for the eye sockets and the nostril and even edges of the teeth if you need to. I think the biggest thing that you want to avoid is utilizing the template too much. So it's okay to aid you, you know, to use it when necessary if you are struggling a little bit. But uh, don't try and just hold the template down and really pump on the paint. And it's just going to give you a real flat appearance. So the idea with these freehand templates is to utilize them to make it easier to create the initial sketch of the artwork. And then you render freehand off that. So teeth are quite difficult to render as you've got to be reasonably sharp with them. But it does help having that negative template on there to protect my background. So that's one great feature about this particular set that you're getting both. Most of the time you just get the positive template.
Okay, a few final shadows and then I'm ready to unmask the skull. So carefully removing some of the uh, exterior paper mask. And then we're going to remove the negative stencil and you can see how nice and crisp that leaves our skull. And I mean, you could leave it as is if you really wanted to. Put a drop shadow on the white background and you're done. Um, I'm going to come in and just clean up some of these areas that are left by the stencil. So some of those white gaps. And soften off some of the edges as well. So just take your time with this up nice and close and control your overspray seeing as you've got such a nice uh, clean background you could also get the positive template again mask off all the inside part of it say the nose sockets and you know all the bits to protect the actual skull that you've just done um, put that back on so to mask off and protect what you've just painted and then do a background. But you'll notice the background that I'm going to do, I'm just going to do it freehand around the skull. And again, I'm utilizing this uh, texture template. And using my darker sepia brown, I'm just coming in around the edge. And sort of lifting the template to get a softer texture and also lay, laying it flat to get a harsher texture so that's giving me a sense of depth already Now I'm coming in and doing just some uh, freehand sort of very fine dagger strokes. Wispy sort of lines coming off the edge of the skull in certain points. If you struggle to do these vertically you could always uh, spin the canvas sideways and do them horizontally if that makes it easier for you. And now I'm going to dust over the edges. So essentially I want to darken around the edge of that canvas and then um, have that sort of blending in to a lighter tone around the skull. And you'll notice uh, I'm also using a bit of freehand airbrushing, so not just the template. So just really mixing it up and dusting over it again just to get those edges darker. And now to add even more depth I'm going to use that transparent black. So I'm using all the same colors as before, nothing's changed. I have to say I do really love the combination of sepia browns with black, I just, I love that look. So just moving around the edges of that canvas uh, using that darker transparent black. Same principle as before. 
meaning I am moving the template, lifting it up off the surface to get some of those softer uh, texture marks and then up closer to get it a bit more defined and then a bit of freehand airbrushing as well. Also coming in and adding a bit of a darker dagger stroke to those uh, little bits coming off the skull. And while I've got that uh, black, I'm just coming in and adding a bit of a bit more texture in certain spots, darkening off some of the shadows. And so I was pretty happy with it, but as you can see with my actual skull there, I'm missing a part of the jaw and teeth. Now obviously this wasn't part of the template, so it's up to you if you want to add this in. I just thought I would show you how I will add that in quite easily. So I'm using a part of that negative template to get that sort of edge and then I'm freehanding in. If you're not confident with freehanding it, then by all means grab a pencil and sketch it in. I have a 3D uh, skull that I use as a, a bit of a, a guide, a reference guide. If you don't have that, you can just do a Google search, look for a skull and um, use that as your reference, whatever works. And I'm using the uh, sepia, the darker sepia brown as my first tone here. So just carefully uh, pulling out some of the detail for those teeth. And while I've got this tone, I've sort of come in and render some of the other ones as well. And here you have the completed artwork. So showcasing all the texturing. You can really notice the spattering now. So a real basic one to do, especially with the use of those templates. So give it a go, it's a fun one to paint.
And until next time, thanks for joining us, and I will see you again very, very soon in our next tutorial. Bye for now.